early voting opens today in Minnesota. Both presidential candidates coming here today as well, trying to win over voters in the state. Joe Biden in Duluth this afternoon. President Donald Trump in Bemidji tonight. Both candidates have been heavily campaigning in Minnesota. Clearly, their campaigns consider this a swing state up for grabs and very important to both campaigns. Christian Cordero live in St. Paul with more on the race in Minnesota. Good morning, Christian. Jason, good morning. There's a whole lot going on, right? And here to help us, or at least try to help us make sense of things, is uh, David Schultz, professor of political science at Hamlin University. Good morning, David. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. So it seems like um, there is a whole lot up for grabs here in Minnesota for the first time in a very long time. But you're absolutely correct that we've been the most reliable state for voting for a Democrat for president in America. The last time Minnesota won for a Republican was Nixon in 72. Democrats have always been able to count on Minnesota to be a reliable 10 electoral votes for them. But now Minnesota is up for play. We saw that Clinton barely won the state four years ago. Trump wants to win it. By most accounts, Minnesota is a swing state or a competitive state this year. And then when we think about the swing districts in the state, I suppose with that line of thought, it makes sense as to why Joe Biden would be in a place like Duluth right now, because that 7th district is a little bit up for grabs, or uh, the Iron Range, rather, is a little bit up for grabs. Um, and then President Trump, meanwhile, is in Bemidji, a reliably red part of the state. Why? Why okay, that strategy? So we have to think about sort of strategies here. Again, as you're pointing out, Duluth Iron Range area used to be reliably Democratic, but it has started to move, like many rural areas um, across the country, move towards the Republican side. So Biden is going there, I think, to shore up support and, and sort of prevent maybe let's some hemorrhaging of any more Democrats moving over to the Republican mm -hmm. side versus what Trump is doing is his best to try to shore up his base. And it reflects the different strategies that the candidates have, that Trump needs to pump up his base a lot. Um, and Biden, of course, wants to do that, but he also wants to do that by making sure that voters who have drifted away come back to the Democrats. It's a fascinating thought in theory because when you look at the negative campaign ads um, out there, um, a lot of it seems to be focused on the Trump side, at least, uh, for the suburban voter who might be scared of, you know, the unrest that's happening in Minneapolis. But that doesn't necessarily seem true based on your line of thought. Well, well, really, I think in some sense, again, one of the ways of thinking about this, again, so the strategy of the two campaigns is that Trump needs to get his base to turn out, yeah. but also has to hope that the Democrats don't turn out, mm -hmm. which is exactly what happened four years ago. So it's a combination of saying, Trump saying, I want my people come out to vote and make a message that says, listen, even if I can't effectively say the Democrats, I know you're not going to vote for me. They'll yeah. swing voters are not going to vote for me, but at least don't vote for Joe Biden. And so it's different strategies. This overlaps with early voting in Minnesota launching today. No coincidence there. No coincidence whatsoever, except the fact, of course, that it is early voting. It starts. We're one of the first in the country. And both sides want to nail down their bases so that they kind of have those in the bucket of people who have already voted. And this suggests that if Minnesota remains competitive or is a swing state, expect both of these candidates to make future visits to Minnesota. They're going to come back in the next 46 days, you think? I think so, unless the polls suggest that the state is no longer competitive and then the resources are going to go elsewhere. If you're leading either of those campaigns, where do you go in Minnesota? If I go next, if I'm Biden, my next visit is to somewhere in Hennepin County, Minneapolis, because four years ago, the turnout in Hennepin County was down quite dramatically, which meant Democrats didn't show up. If I'm Biden, rather if I'm Trump, I should say, yeah. I go to Bloomington, Minnesota, hmm. um, and I give a talk all about crime and law and order. And again, not expecting suburban women um, who are the most critical voters in America, not expecting them to vote for him, but hoping they won't vote for Biden. Economically challenging in Bloomington as well. Professor, Correct. thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. Jason, 46 days. I can't tell if that's a long time or a short amount of time before election day. But as you pointed to earlier, election day for some people starting this weekend, right? Unbelievable. More than 100,000 people requesting early ballots in the city of Minneapolis. People who have made up their minds already, Christian, are going to be able to vote uh, tomorrow, today. It's yeah. over for them, right? It is. And that perhaps coincides with why these campaigns are here right now is just to get those votes in early. Uh, and keep them coming. Yeah. Christian Cordero and uh, David Schultz, thank you both. The first presidential debate set for September 29th. We'll be covering it all. WCCO, CBSM Minnesota, your campaign 2020 November election headquarters.